They say the Philippines can change you, but is it for the better or worse? This is a true story. Watch till the end and find out if the Philippines will save you or break you. If you think it's bad in America and you're unhappy here, don't do what I did. I've messed up, I've got a girl pregnant. Oh no! And she's a virgin? She's never had a boyfriend before? Right, yeah, I hear you. If you got that girl pregnant, is that a girl you could spend 18 years with? Or would you vanish? Hi there, and a warm welcome to our channel. If you're new here, we're delighted to have you. You've just landed on a channel that's all about our family's exciting journey from America to Dumaguete, Philippines. Join us as we navigate this new chapter. Hello, welcome back to the channel today. For you all that already know, I'm Jay. And to the new viewers out there, I'm Jay's Philippines. We're gonna take a step back today. We're gonna to rewind it back to 2018 and talk about why in 2024, I have the ability to say, the Philippines saved my life. And this is me in 2018. I'm in Kentucky. I'm living the typical American, middle aged 44 years old. For about a year at this point, I'd already been thinking about the Philippines, but I'm really just down and out, unenthused about life, barely getting by with work, uninspired, unimagined, low energy, just enough to go to the gym, but barely, not doing it great. And that's it. Just living the life, watching my life, the best years pass me by. So what do you think happens? I'm looking for something to get me out of this country. I wanna run away from it all. I don't wanna be here anymore. <sighs> Some people call it depression possibly. I call it unenthused. I call it low energy. You can probably call it a lot of different things. But what I definitely called it is, I didn't wanna be in Kentucky no more. 44 years old, I've already been married. I'm divorced. <laughs> I've raised three kids as much as I could after an American style divorce. I didn't have my custody of the kids. I didn't see them nearly as much as I wanted to see them. And like most of us, we're dads. We're kind of off on the side. We're used when we need it. We want to have more relationships, but we just don't know how to go about it. It's not in our favor here. So what do we do? We try to find a way to be happy in this world. I've waited for all my kids to be adults. My daughter was the last one. She turned 18 and I was out of here. I was done out of America. I didn't know how long I was going to be gone, but I knew I didn't want it to be short. I have to get out of here. I want a new life. I don't care who finds me. Oh no! Pretty down. Just don't care anymore. I, I want to go live a new life. I'm at the airport hours early. I, I can't wait to just get out of here. I'm, I'm ready for my flight. I'm there at least four hours early. There's nobody in the airport. I'm there by myself. A couple stops. I land in Manila. So you land in Manila. Never been out of the country like this. I've went to a couple of Bahama Islands before, but nothing out of the country really. Just these little trip past Florida and back for a few days. So now you're out of the country. You're as far away from Kentucky as you can possibly get without coming back to it. I'm on the other side of the planet. I'm gone. Land in Manila. Let the fun begin. I have, I think, three girls wanting to meet me at, oh my God. at the airport. I picked the cutest like most guys probably would. Yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. <laughs> nice. Spend a little time with her, get to know her a little bit. I kind of want to see this other girl now. I'm in the Philippines and I'm doing like a lot of guys do. How fast and how furious can you get through some girls? <laughs> Meet some girls, talk to girls. It's like, here we go. But honestly, I didn't want to be in Manila very long. Let's fast forward it. Let's head down to Cebu, Philippines. So you get to Cebu. And what do you do? You do like so many. You go straight to a business park, one of the fancier places you can find in the city. So you live like 99% of the Filipinos don't live. You lived in a secluded private park area. Fancy restaurants, high rises, very expensive for Filipino standards. And that's right where you go to. So what are you really learning? Not a whole lot, but that's where you went. If you think it can be bad in America sometimes when you're middle-aged and you don't have a whole lot going on, you're really trying to find your way and what to do next in life, try landing in the Philippines and within 90 days, one of the girls you're seeing is pregnant. Huh? Oh my God! Yeah, don't do what I did. Don't land in the Philippines 
Find your way around real quickly. Meet a few too many people too easily and get one of them pregnant. These are not things I'm proud of. These are just the realities when you come to the Philippines. You know, one head is doing a lot of thinking and another head is doing a lot of thinking. You don't come here trying to do things that you wouldn't be proud of, but sometimes it just happens. And as you get older, I'm sure these things slow down and whatnot. But when I came, it was kind of like being a teenager again. Let's just be honest. We're coming here. We're seeing women we don't see back home. We're getting attention we don't get back at home. And things can get out of hand in a hurry. And with the invention of the internet and dating apps and being a foreigner in a new area, you stand out. Everybody wants to know who you are. Even the dudes want to know who you are in the Philippines sometimes, especially in your area. The guards always would say hi to me. They asked me where I'm from. Um, the mall, the guards were going back and forth at you know, a couple different malls I went to. They wanted to know where you were from. I actually made a couple friends with the guards. But you're looking back on it now. I mean, I'm not proud of the things of my past, but I'm not ashamed of it. But I wish I'd done things a little bit different. So let's fast forward a little bit. Got my girl pregnant. Wasn't even my girlfriend. My girl I'm dating. Girl I liked, but I was not in love. Huh? I didn't see rainbows and unicorns and wedding bells or any of that stuff coming. No! I was new to the Philippines. I just lost a lot of money in investments. My mind was elsewhere. I was not interested in dating. Here and there, whatever. I, I just didn't really care. I was unenthused. I left America. Things happened with some investments. Wasn't feeling real great. And here I am sitting in a place that is new to me. Portions of foods were little. I'm miserable. The first month in the Philippines was so close to being the breaking point for me. It was almost over before it began. 30 days into the Philippines, I watched my investments go in half, 50% gone within 30 days. I don't know where to find good food. Uh, I'm eating chain fast food stuff, Jolly Bees, and just different chicken after chicken and rice. Try something different, don't like it. Portions are tiny. Whew, I was having a rough time for that first 30 days. Luckily, after 30 days, things got better. Did my, my visa run, headed over to Pattaya for a week. Had no idea what Pattaya was about until the last day of my visit. Then I really kind of understood where I was. Didn't do any research on Pattaya before I went. Came back to the Philippines, had some dates lined up, as you do with dating apps. And there's this girl, Adeline. She's still writing me. She didn't forget me while I was gone. Other girls had, they find whatever dates they can find and they move on. They touch base back and forth, trying to meet up. Maybe they're in your area right now, maybe they're not. But there's this one little girl around the corner, not far from my condo, who's working nearby, who wants to see me almost all the time. That's a red flag for me. I did not go to the Philippines to find a girlfriend, not in the first trip, not in the first month or two or any of that stuff. But I don't want to push people away. You want to spend time with me? Sure, let's spend time together. Let's go get some coffee. Let's hang out. I'm going to the coffee shop to use the Wi-Fi to watch some investments, watch some trades that are going on. You want to hang out? Let's go. You can meet me over there. I don't care if she shows up or not, to be honest. But that's where I'll be. Like a foreigner, we kind of like the attention. Someone shows up to see us. We can talk, not talk. Well, she shows up. I'm not really into the meeting, to be honest with you. I'm watching my investment go down probably another 5% over a three or four hour period. Period. So my mind is really not into girls right now, especially not at that moment. But this little girl, Adeline, she's definitely into me. Well, she's pretending to be anyway. At least I think it is. My ego tells me it is. Because, you know, we're foreigners. They want us, right? Yeah. You know, and of course we're over there. I'm thinking about myself. I'm thinking about my time and my life and my frustrations. I'm not thinking about Adeline and her frustrations. I'm not thinking about her situation a whole lot. She's getting off of work. She's coming to see me with a little bit of time she's got. She's got to get home and get some rest. She's got to be right back at work the next day. But yeah, she's trying like a lot of girls do in the Philippines. She's got to take her chance. You don't meet foreigners every day. You don't meet single foreigners every day. You don't meet 44 year old single foreigners every day, new to the country, new to the area, right around the corner from you. And for a lot of these girls, Adeline was 33 years old when she met me, getting ready to turn 34. To me, that's a young girl. You know, I don't understand yet in the Philippines, that's not really young in a lot of people's minds. That's a normal age, you know, that's nothing, you know, to be bragging about youth or anything. <laughs> Philippines taught me a little bit, even though some of the girls I was talking to who found out I was talking to a 33 year old woman laughed at me. I don't know what they're laughing at. I mean, it's fine with me. I mean, nothing, I'm 44, she's 33, no big deal. I don't understand. Adeline's running out of time in her, her own little world, her mind. She really wants to see if I'm a potential date, see if I'm potential something to her. 
Looking back on it now, I can really look back and understand what she was going through. In Idolin's world, she's got one or two swings at bat here, and that's it. I was one date away from being smitten by another girl, you know, some really cute, you know, youthful girl who's just so enamored with me that I can't take my eyes off of her type of situation. I wasn't feeling that way with Idolin. I wasn't feeling that way with anyone. I was just dating around, and Idolin was the most aggressive at the time. You know, you fast forward a little bit and you realize Idolin's working with her own dilemmas. She's got a full-time job she can't take off. She's taking care of her family back home. She's got a lot of things going on in her world. And a new guy, this is her one, two chance to either try to get my attention to keep seeing me or it's going to be over. And it, it was really close to being over because I was ready to move out of Cebu City. I was ready to move somewhere else and do some island hopping. Coming straight at you from Cebu City. This place is amazing. Well, some more time together. We hung out a few more times and it did not take long to get the dreaded, you're what? You're pregnant? I probably shouldn't use the word dreaded, but 44 years old, about to turn 45, I'm pregnant? You're pregnant? I'm about to turn 45 and you're pregnant? <sighs> I haven't got a girl pregnant since my last little girl was born 18 years ago. I got to the Philippines and in 90 days I got a girl pregnant. I wasn't a saint from the time my daughter was born until she turned 18. So it's finding it really hard to imagine I've gotten a girl pregnant in the first 90 days. So honestly, I'm not really feeling anything. I'm kind of feeling like, yeah, right. But let's just fast forward a little bit here. I'm gonna save you all the suspense. She was pregnant. I got a girl pregnant at 44, almost 45 years old. I waited 18 years for my daughter to graduate high school, become a little woman, ready to move off and go off to college, you know, two or three hours away from home. I can just see my mother back home going, I knew it, calling my brothers, guess what? Jay's pregnant. Didn't take him 90 days, he got a girl pregnant. I mean, you wanna talking about like a world changing event. <laughs> you know, just like, what in the world have I done? Well, guess what? How often do you meet a girl in, the, in anywhere? and not just the Philippines, but how often do you get to meet a girl, accidentally get pregnant, yeah, sure, the accidental part ain't accidental if you're having sex, but didn't intend to have a baby, and you have a baby, get pregnant, and you happen to get lucky enough to realize you found a virgin. Wow. What? Never had a boyfriend before. Wow. Wow, okay, it's not sounding so bad at the moment, hold on. So, I've messed up, I've got a girl pregnant. And she's a virgin? She's never had a boyfriend before? Like most Americans, you'd be like, right, yeah, I hear you, Jay, sure. And my American side would be like that, except I don't know the Philippines yet. It's a different culture. A lot of girls are walking around in their 30s in the Philippines, still virgins. So did I get lucky? Oh, hell yes, I got lucky. I was lucky to find what I found. I'm having a baby with a girl in the Philippines. I think I want to raise my baby with her. I don't want my baby off on some island being raised by parents, grandparents. Nothing against the grandparents, love grandparents. But I didn't know them then. I'm 45, and the last thing that's going to happen, if I have anything to do with it, is my new baby girl is going to be shipped off to some island while mama continues working. And I just vanish back to America probably. Oh, you're talking about a nightmare. I, d I wouldn't want the demons in my head for the rest of my life. Like, where's my little girl that I had three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, and year after year just wondering what happened to my little girl. So that just wasn't something I could deal with. Kids and a marriage, you know, the separation, the divorce, the alienation part of it all. You see them when you see them. You try to see them, but you can't because they're busy. They're already doing things with the mother side of the family. I've already done that. I don't think I could have endured another 18 years watching a child grow up that would probably love me if I was around, probably be my little baby if I was around. So it was an easy choice. You know, there's nothing to figure out here. There was nothing wrong with idling. I just didn't go there to find love right away. But it's what happens when you make mistakes. I went there and I played a game and there's a risk when you play these games in the Philippines. If you ain't careful, you can have a baby in the first 90 days of your visit as well. There's a lot of younger guys that's following the channel, 30, 40, 50 year olds. We're the young guys to be honest. It can happen. Be prepared. If you ain't careful, it can happen. I'm watching some other vloggers. They're doing what I almost did. I was almost the traveling vlogger, island to island. Look at me, girls everywhere you go. And it would have been easy. First of all, there's none of those videos or none of those channels to be envious about, guys. Nothing to, about it to be envious. And they may not be trying to make you envious. Not even going to put that on them. But 
in the Philippines, travel vlogging, having girls everywhere you go with you, that is not an accomplishment. It's a very easy thing to do in the Philippines. It's not knocking the girls. The girls don't mean they're sleeping with you just because they're traveling around or showing up with you. They just might want some camera time, be in a video. They love the camera in the Philippines. They might want to be a part of your travel channel. They might want to have some free meals and you'll probably pay for it because it's cheap to you, right? You're the vlogger, you're the big shot. I am so glad that did not happen to me. If I did not get her pregnant, there is almost a 100% chance as I started to vlog in the Philippines in 2018, I was going to go that route. I was ready to hit the town and start vlogging the clubs and the girls everywhere you went, some of the dates I was going on because I was finding some nice looking dates. I never had my stomach churned. I never had the butterflies with any of the girls I met in the Philippines on my first trip. It takes time for those things. You can meet a pretty face. Doesn't mean the butterflies come from it. When you get to the Philippines, you better be prepared. What if you got a girl pregnant? Would you be able to take care of that baby? Would you want to be around with the baby? If you got that mother pregnant, if you got that girl pregnant, is that a girl you could spend 18 years with? Could you at least be friends with her enough to raise a child or would you vanish? Answer that for yourself. Most of you out there probably ain't in a situation where any of that's a, a concern, but there is some of you out there where you better be careful because that's always a concern in the Philippines. You could have a baby as well. I did. Hopefully it never happens to you. But for me, that's my story. I ended up having a baby with Idolin. We ended up getting married. It took a little time to get her out of the country to get back here to America. We went through COVID together. It was a nightmare. COVID almost broke us. Living in a condo during COVID for over a year together in a 22 square meter apartment with a baby, that almost broke us. That was looking out the window from the 20th floor a few times, just wondering how far how would it hurt? <laughs> I mean, it was rough deal. It was really a hard time in the Philippines, just as boyfriend, girlfriend with a baby. We got through that together. I'm figuring we can probably get through anything together. You know, the way this story ends up for me, it saves years. By me and Adeline having a baby when we did, it probably saved me who knows how many years of running around the islands with an almost great girl, but never quite the right one. And I'm just getting older, 47, 48, now I'm 50. I'm thankful I'm not gonna be, you know, an older guy before I finally find the right girl. I'm thankful that this saved me years of all that. I'm focused on this little girl. I mean, I'm ready to have fun. It's brought a clarity to myself that I didn't have when I came over here to the Philippines. I was lost. I was ready just to go be ignorant, just straight up ignorant. You know, it's what we do, a lot of us. I definitely am guilty of that. Finding her when I did, I didn't realize it at the time. Most people, I don't think, would have been excited by that situation because we weren't even boyfriend, girlfriend. I mean, it was just a girl who kept trying to get my attention and I was eh, kind of receptive, but I wasn't really receptive. <laughs> I definitely wasn't super pleasant about anything. I was just like, sure. I didn't dislike her. Don't get me wrong. I did not dislike her, but I kind of felt the vibe she was giving off was on another level than what I was giving back. You know, a lot of people will say something like, you got lucky, man. You got lucky. I really did. I got lucky. I don't didn't get lucky. I got clarity again. I got drive again. I have a reason to push myself again. I am so thankful I'm not sitting over in some condo in the Philippines doing nothing but scrolling through this, swiping left and right, another date lined up. I was there for 30 days and I got tired of doing that, but I was still doing it. A lot of us get into habits that we do that we know it ain't kind of what we want to be doing, but we do it anyway. I was already feeling that in the first 30 days in the Philippines. There's no accomplishment in doing that. So you kind of feel empty. You think you want that until you get it, then it probably changes a little bit. I am so thankful that I found her. She had my daughter who gives me almost, I mean, joy nonstop, even when she's not in her best of moods. I love her to death. I get to focus on that, build my life in the Philippines now. I got accepted by her family. You know, I didn't even know how that was gonna work out at first because I did not know how to handle this at, at the beginning. I mean, it was rough. You know, the first year before we decided we were gonna move forward and try to be together and get married and all that stuff, it wasn't an easy decision, right? Fat. We had some understandings about who I was and who she was and her culture, my culture. It took some, uh, work. It was not simple by any means. And we went up and down just like a stock chart. One day it felt good. Another day she'd say something. I'm like, what? Ain't no way. We'll get into those stories and when the times are right. But long story short, we had our baby. Life is good. Our family is going to grow in the Philippines. Dumaguete's our home. Kentucky's our home. I got grandchildren here. She's got family there. 
we're looking forward to building labs in both countries. And it's fun to have a spot that is ours. You know, I don't want her to be like, we don't have something. She gets to call Dumaguete her home. She gets to make that her home. She gets to make friends now. We get to start looking at relationships with other couples and other expats and kids and stuff. We got a chance now to actually build relationships and it's already working. If you're going to come to the Philippines, come ready to love this place. This place has got so much to offer you. If you're not ready for it mentally and you don't know what you're coming into, it can be overwhelming. Your senses can really be difficult to control. The heat, the traffic, the noise, just there's so much going on that you may not be ready for. Be prepared for a lot of commotion. Be prepared for weights and the heat and different things. If you can be ready for those things, that's going to help your struggle a whole lot. The sooner you can get past those things, the sooner you can get to enjoying this country. This country's got so much to offer you. You don't want to miss it because you didn't quite understand what you were going to. Had you just known a little bit more, it would have been an amazing dream for you. A lot of guys leave, they weren't ready for it. They weren't ready for what it brought. They Maybe they didn't plan for the situation right. Had I not been in a better situation, I would have been in a really bad deal. Having a baby with a girl and I can't afford the situation, I can't afford to be a dad, I can't, you know, just whatever. Maybe I just was reluctant and didn't want to do it. I didn't want to be married again. I was done with marriage. You know, If I'd been in that situation, how much more stress would I have created for my life? Having a baby overseas that you want to be a part of but you can't? I don't even want to think about that nightmare. That's a nightmare I just, I've already experienced somewhat. I don't want to do it again. So I was lucky to be in a situation where I had a little control. Some people don't have that. And you get over to the Philippines and other areas, maybe it's not getting a girl pregnant. Maybe it's just trying to find a way to survive. Finding your groceries, your food, your friendships. Maybe you're watching too much YouTube. Maybe you're watching too many bad YouTubers. Maybe I'm one of them. I don't know. But there's a lot of bad ones out there giving a lot of bad advice. Maybe I'm one of them. Be careful who you listen to in the Philippines. Find your friendships. Find your, find your reasons to get up in the morning. Find your reasons to go do things and get you out of the house. Some of the worst advice I hear ever is just get straight to that province. Go find your little whatever out there in nowhere land. It can be some of the worst planning ever. If you don't know what that means, I mean, you can go straight out to the province and find your little whatever and be surrounded by the loudest roosters in the Philippines or the karaoke king of the Philippine islands. You know, that's going to ruin everything right away. But you thought going to the province was going to fix something. Be careful about making a decision on something permanently. Have your options open. Learn what you're going over there for, what you're trying to achieve. What do you want to achieve? Don't go over there in a rush. Have time. If you've been there before, great. Just none of this applies to you. This is for the new guy who has no idea what he's really in for other than some videos that he's watched and some people telling him he's going to love it. Well, you potentially will love it, but you better know what you're going for and you better have the patience and the time to be patient. If you're on a short trip, Eh, it's a coin toss. You may not fall in love with the Philippines on a short trip. It took me 30 days at least before the chip fell off my shoulder, before the stress and anxiety of traffic and the walking up and down the streets finally subsided. It took me a month before I found the food that I like to eat enough to where I was not complaining anymore. It took me a month to find some things. And of course, as soon as I did find some things and I started enjoying it a little bit more, boom, life changed again. So, you know, I'm glad y'all came out with me today. And if you're still here listening to all this, awesome. Guys, take care. And I'll have you a video out here in about another 48 hours. Take care. God bless.